Hey, everybody. Welcome um, to another monoprep about the intermediate, um, which just means that we're going to be doing more stuff, um, just learning new techniques and different ways to, to paint on the screen. Um, so today we're going to be using these little things. They're really cool squeeze bottles, and we're going to try to like paint on the screen with these, as well as using brushes. And again, I just want to uh, give a shout out to South Island Graphics and, and, and for hosting our workshop and for putting all this together uh, technology-wise and everything and for providing all the inks and stuff like that. South Island, check them out, donate to them, um, hang out with them. Um, but yeah, it's just the next step. So I have my sketch, put my sketch down um, on my paper. It's just a simple like bird. I'm gonna put it down on there. Put my plexi on top just to hold it down. And we have the screen ready. So again, with monoprints, um, you wanna make sure you're putting all the highlights down first. Cause again, it, it's like painting backwards. Um, and if you have all your stuff set up, join me and doing it. And if not, the video will be up so you can check it out as well. And again, there'll be the, the next workshop is next month on the 30th, I think. Um, so keep your eye out and I'll remind you um, again um, when it's gonna happen again. So let's get started. We're outside, so it's not the perfect environment. It's, it's nice and it's windy, but we don't want the wind because the wind dries the screen really quick. Um, I think the last time it kind of dried up a little bit too much, so I'll try to move a little bit faster today and get it done, um, and we'll see how it comes out. So the cool part about using these is you can apply ink like really quickly. Um, the part that kind of sucks about it is that they get dry, so you always have to kind of like poke the nozzle with like a paper clip. I'm just going to open it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the flower. And make sure I got my ink ready. So you can kind of just apply the ink on there nice and smooth like that. I want to add some pinks in there. So this is something that um, I know Wayne Healy uses a lot in his model prints and you can see lots of the streaks They look really cool. I don't know how it's going to come out, so we'll, we'll see towards the end if it comes out looking good or if it just comes out looking like, like mush. Right before uh, we started the, the, the video, I made sure that, that I cleaned up some of these bottles, but they get clogged. Now, so I have my brush and I have some here in my palette. I wanted some lighter colors and some light greens in there as well. And it goes like that. And then also you can just like mix links on there as well. You don't have to keep them in there. It's like a mushy, mushy flower. Now we'll do the bird. I'm gonna make sure uh, 
I want around this eye to be white. Oops. It's windy. The beak to be kind of plain. It's kind of like a duck beak. And I have some green for the bird here. It's getting cloudy again. I know hummingbirds are pink, but some will have a little bit of pink. Yeah. And then some blues. Blue for the eyes. So it's just a really fun way to kind of use paint and use something different other than a paintbrush to give you some kind of like lines and squiggles. You could even do like stuff like that. Kind of like mustard. We got DJ Valeria today for uh, providing the jams. I want a bird to have like a, a yellow glow around it. So we'll do this. And with the brush, I could kind of blend all these in a little bit. And we'll see how it comes out. Uh, I want some blue for my sky. I want to put down. Just some uh I don't know, clouds, it's not called clouds. Oops.
Hopefully that looks like clouds. There's some nice clouds out today. that ink on there really quick. Now I can use it to put my background to the sky. Cool birds, crows today out here. Hopefully everybody's doing good. Hanging in there with the quarantine. All right. So again, it's just today sharing the different techniques, how a different artists use model prints and what they could use. Um, Kind of having fun with it. I'm kind of out of practice a little bit. So we'll see how it comes out. Looks kind of messy. Give it a try. Again, don't forget to take out your flexi and your sketch. Put the screen back down. And again, I'm a sucker for bright colors for the background. Just make sure if you're going to use these bottles, you keep them clean all the time. The ink that we're using today get turned, basically turns into like a plastic. So once it dries, it clogs up the little nozzles. There we go. And I could have done it. This is going to be our background. So this will fill in lots of the open space on the screen. Um, I could have done like another blue just to kind of really make the blue like really like to fill it all in. But I kind of like to have texture, different colors of the texture. So I always like to use a different color or a contrasting color. Um, a lot of times you could even use like a clear and it'll just go through and it won't kind of change the, the color that you have. Never speak today. Sorry for it's also then so we get up where it's flying by, and dogs are barking, and crows are crowing, crowing, making noise, whatever they do. There's also like those crazy parrots that are out here. I should have been a parrot, actually. Um, so once you're ready to to pull the squeegee, just kind of get it going. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And you can tell, see how I pull the ink down and it creates like just a mess in the bottom. If I didn't mask it on the bottom with the other colors, it would look like that, like coming from the bird. And, and I, that's not what you really want. And then let's see what we got today. And we have our kind of hummingbird. Um, Again, if I wasn't outside, I'd take a little bit more time with it and kind of get a little bit more detail on there. Um, today, I just was kind of experiment and kind of use these bottles in, in a different way to show you how that's kind of used uh, along with the paint brushes and just different ways of painting on top of a screen. Um, and that's pretty much it for today. Again, remember to join us uh, next month on the Graphics Facebook Live. 
Uh, I think I'm going to try to do a portrait. So we'll see how that goes. It might look like a really blurry face, uh, but it'll be fun. Um, thank you all once again. Have a great day. Um, the next workshop is on the 30th. Um, if you have any questions, I guess you could put them on the comments. We have two questions, Dewey. Yeah. All right. So can you share some of the biggest challenges in mono printing? And also if you have recommendations to make a DIY frame at home. Okay. So the biggest challenge to mono printing is the ink drying on the screen as you go um, and trying to get details. As you can see, once you pull the screen and put the squeegee on there, it kind of blurs everything together. Um, so the trick is kind of be a little bit fast. And also to kind of use that to your advantage as well. If, if you want white as a highlight, you could put colors down and let those dry, knowing that that'll dry and it'll be white on the paper. So just kind of really thinking about like the, the time that you, that you have, um, how much details you can get, um, and just kind of going really fast. And another challenge is also just trying not to make it look too flat in areas. Um, I like to have textures kind of like that. Um, if it's all blue, it just kind of looks too flat and it kind of looks like a regular print. The idea is for these to kind of look like paintings, but also be a print as well. Um, so hopefully that, that answers that question. Uh, a DIY screen could be just something as simple as a, maybe like a, a wood frame. Um, and then you could actually staple the fabric onto the screen as well. Um, it's a lot of work to actually make your own screens. I mean, it, it's something that, that you could totally do and they do sell the fabric online or at art stores. But nowadays, I, I think um, it's just cheaper to buy the screen remade and you can order them as well. And they come already pre-made and it's probably like 20 bucks. Um, but if you have the fabric, I mean, you could just build something at home or use a, 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 a crochet loop. And, and kind of tighten the screen because I think what you want is the screen to have lots of tension in there. Um, so definitely we could stretch out over like a wooden frame or a picture frame and staple them in there and kind of use it that way as well. I think um, anything works really, as long as you can do it. Um, and that's pretty much it, unless there's more questions. That was it. Yeah. Thank you all. It was just a really quick one today. So thanks for joining us and hopefully everybody's doing okay.